Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 55 of my Java video tutorial series. Well, so far in this tutorial, we have created our asteroids that bounce off of each other, and we have created a ship that rotates. Now I'm going to really throw a monkey wrench into this whole entire tutorial, because in the past, I've mainly focused on the math behind programming a game. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to focus on the object-oriented design principles behind designing a game right and on top of that, how exactly to solve problems. Now this ship, you may be surprised, is now moving around on the screen and also it is floating in a completely different way. And you can see that not only is it accelerating in certain directions, but I'm also able to rotate it and then switch it around and have it fly in completely different directions. Now, how exactly would you go from what we've created so far using object-oriented design principles to make this much more advanced spaceship? In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you step-by-step step through how to solve that very important issue. When we're going to design a ship, you have to go through a series of different steps. Now, all programmers do this in a completely different way. But what I like to start out with is to list the features of Spaceship. We're going to throw our previous Spaceship design right out the window because we're going to use object-oriented design principles and do this the right way. Now what are we going to do here? Based off of what you previously saw, we're going to move the ship around the screen. And this is just a listing of all our features. This is extremely important if you want to be able to solve most any problem. We're going to rotate the ship clockwise when D is pressed. And we solved that previously. We're also going to rotate the ship counterclockwise when A is pressed. On top of that, your customer would say, I want the ship to rotate in any direction, 360 degrees. Well, that throws a monkey wrench in how we're using polygons and how we're rotating currently, because that just doesn't work. And you're going to see as this goes on, we're going to solve more and more problems. Want to be able to increase velocity slowly. As you saw, the velocity picked up when W is pressed. That's something else we didn't calculate, and that also is a floating point sort of situation we're going to have to solve. If the ship goes off the board, have it appear on the other side. Well, that also needs change because we had it set up so that it would bounce off the side of the screen. If the ship hits something, explode, okay, something else brand new. Also, the customer would say, I want the ship to continue on its current path, but still be able to rotate. Something else completely different. As you saw, the ship would continue based off of where I was thrusting it, but also allow for it to change directions. So that's something else we got to do. And then on top of that, use encapsulation so the application is more flexible. Okay, so those are our features. Those are all things that we're going to need to implement whenever we create our new spaceship class. Now, what a lot of people do is they use a case diagram after they create this list of features, and it's normally a drawing. I personally don't like to use them because I get the same thing out of just typing out everything. So you could draw, you know, a stick figure or something that would represent the player, and then what I just simply would do is type in that the player starts the game. So there's your first step of your use case. They move the ship. And this is to just make everything as simple as humanly possible. How are they going to move the ship? Well, they're going to rotate the ship, and also they're going to increase the velocity of the ship. And then, finally, if the ship crashes, start over. Okay, so there's my basic use case sort of diagram without pictures. You know, like I said, you could draw a picture of the player if you really wanted to do that. But And then what do we need to do? Well, then we need to either define our risks or our problem code. This is what is going to be the basis of all the fields that we're going to need or variables, as well as all the methods or functions, whatever you want to call it. Well, here are our problems. And I've already talked about them. 360 degree rotation means we have to use doubles. We can no longer rely on integers because that's not going to work if we want 360 degree rotation. What's something else? Well, my polygons are built using int 
arrays. That's an issue because I just said in part one here of a risks or potential problem code that we're going to need to use doubles. So how are we going to get around that one? There's something else. And then floating point calculations lose precision. Okay, there's something else we need to worry about. And how are we going to solve it? How do we slowly increase velocity? There's another issue. Again, forcing us to use floating point numbers. How can we rotate the ship while maintaining the current course? Something else we didn't think about. How do we move the ship when it goes off the board? Another issue that we have not thought about. Okay, so those are really the main things. I have already solved collision issues in previous tutorials, so I'm not going to really worry about that right now. Whenever you get through your features and your use case diagrams and all these different things, you want to focus on the things that you don't know how to solve. So let's think about what exactly we can do here to solve these guys. Well, one thing, which we've actually used in the past, which is a fine transform. That solves a lot of our problems because it's going to allow us to do a whole bunch of things. Use doubles for rotation and then just have it worry about that and all the precision issues that we've had previously. And we can also let the polygon be an int array, meaning that its points are going to be defined by two integer arrays that contain both the x and the y points, but have the center be a double. So there you are. Now we're going to solve a lot of the other issues. We're going to have the center be a double, but have the polygon remain as just an integer array. So we're going to be able to still use those wonderful polygons. And when the ship goes off the board, just change the center points. Well, right there, with just that little change to our code, we're going to solve a whole bunch of our problems. One, two, three, and six. Okay, so all of those risks right there are all fixed just simply by using a fine transform as well as going in and defining our center point as being a double. That's going to solve a ton of problems for us. So let's go through here and solve all our other problems. I'm just going to get rid of this here for a second. Solve some more problems. Okay, well, we'll create some velocity methods that increase and decrease velocity. And that guy right there is going to solve problem four. How do we slowly increase velocity? And I just threw in the decrease velocity because I think I might want to do that as well. And then finally, that just leaves us with how can we rotate the ship while maintaining the current course? We can simply solve that problem by having a rotation angle for current movement and then also have a separate one, have a rotation angle for the ship's rotation. So we're going to have a movement rotation and we're going to have a ship rotation, totally separate. So this is going to handle where it's currently moving and the angle in which it's moving. And this guy's going to handle the actual ship rotation, what's going on on the screen. Okay, so there we are. We solved all of our risks and all those different things right there. So now what we move on to is a scenario. And in here, basically, we're just going to walk through the player playing our game. Let's just give ourselves some screen space here. Okay, in this scenario, we're going to draw a polygon center of the screen with points surrounding the center points. And what this is going to do by working our way through this, this is going to tell us exactly what fields and methods we're going to use. So, what are we going to need here? A, to do this, we're going to need game board width and height. So, those are some fields that we're going to need. Center points or polygon, X and Y, polygon, X and Y, integer array, obviously. And we might need upper left hand corner X and Y. See, we're thinking through this process, so we're gonna put everything in here we might have, as well as things we know we definitely need. I'm just gonna put a question mark there, just so that I'm able to see that and say, eh, might not need that. Okay, so then we're gonna move on with our scenario. The player is gonna increase the ship velocity. Okay, so what are we going to need to be able to handle that situation? Well, we're going to need X and Y velocity methods as well as fields. And we're also going to need the, the ability to increase the velocity as well as decrease it based off of what we had before. And the scenario continues. Player rotates ship. Okay, what are we going to need to handle here? Let's move that up there. We're going to need a rotation angle. Definitely going to have to store that and also have methods that are going to allow us to change it. We're going to need a movement angle 
and we're also going to on the fly because we're going to continue using the rotation angle and change it based off of keyboard presses but the movement angle is actually going to have to be calculated on the fly so we're going to have to calculate movement angle so some things to think about there and then finally player hits a rock and blows up so there is our scenario that we have right there so now based off of all this stuff we're going to create all of our fields and methods and we're going to use a uml class diagram to do that so i'm just going to go spaceship and start defining these guys so i'm going to need my game board width as i saw on the left side of the screen so just create that guy i'm also going to need my game board height and that's also going to be an integer because I'm going to need to know where the center is, and that's the only way I'm going to be able to figure that out. Then I'm going to need my center point for my ship. Like we said before, that's going to be a double. My center point Y, also going to be a double. These are all the fields or variables, whatever you want to call them. Then we're going to need our polygon X array, and that's going to be an integer array. Poly Y array, also going to be an integer array. Ship width, that's going to be an integer. Ship height, also an integer. And then we have our upper left hand X position again I'm not sure if I'm going to use that but let's just throw it in here and see what happens and upper left hand Y position also going to be a double and then we're going to have to be able to change our velocity so X velocity double Y velocity also going to be a double rotation angle double I'm going to say moving angle also going to be a double and that's it so these, which are all defined over here, I mean, you can see X, Y velocity, all these things line up with what we have on the right side of our screen. And that is, as far as I can tell right now, after I work through this scenario, the only fields that I'm going to need to create a spaceship. Now I got to think about what methods am I going to need? Well, I'm going to need a spaceship method, which is going to receive an integer array, another integer array, and those are to define the X and Y coordinates for my polygon and the number of coordinates. So there's one method. I'm also going to have to get the X center point for my ship or my polygon, and that's going to be a double. Remember, we have to have that be a double because we want a lot of precision with this guy. And then we're also going to need the Y point for that, and that also is going to return a double value whenever it's called. Guess what else we're going to need to do? We're going to need to set these positions right here. So just change this to set instead of get. We're also going to want to be able to change our X position. So I'm going to call that increase X position. And we're going to pass it a double so that it knows how much to increase by. And it's not going to return anything whenever it's done. Well, if we're going to increase X, we're also going to increase the Y position. If I want to get my upper left hand X position, I'm going to do it that way. And it's going to return a double. And then it's going to do exactly the same thing for the Y position. And then guess what? Since we have our little get functions here, we're probably also going to want set functions. So just do that. We're also going to want to get our ship width. And that's an integer in this situation. It might actually make more sense to copy this guy over to here, which is what I'm going to do. Much better. Now you can see what exactly I need to get and whatever. And this is going to be height. What else do we have over here? Well, we have velocity. There's X velocity. So let's get that as well. And velocity is a double. So that's going to be a double. And then we're going to do the same thing for the Y velocity. And then, of course, if we have get, that means we need a set. So set and set. And then let's just keep on moving on here. We said that we want to be able to increase our velocity as well as decrease our velocity. Let's just get this guy right here. Paste that in there. So this is going to be increase. And it's going to receive a double. And it's not going to return anything. So just set that to void. And then anytime we increase, chances are we're going to want to decrease. Not definitely, but definitely a possibility. And in these beginning stages, that's exactly what you're going to do. You just want to cover all your bases so you can start writing some code afterwards. And then we get down into these guys, rotation angles and moving angles. Well, you're going to want to set your moving angle. And you're just going to put a double inside of there. And if you set, you want to get. Also going to want to probably increase your moving angle. And then with... And then remember, we were talking about previously, moving angle is going to be calculated on the fly. And the angle is going to be based off of X and Y positions. So we're going to go ship X move angle. That might be a little bit complicated to understand right now. But whenever we get into the code, you'll get it. Because I'm using some trigonometry here. And then we're going to have to do the same thing for the rotation angle. So get rotation angle. And then set rotation angle. And then we're also going to have increase rotation angle and decrease it 
And the only other thing is get bounds, which is going to handle collisions for us. And it's not going to return anything. And finally, the big daddy move, which is going to make this whole thing run. So I hope I helped explain exactly how you go from a problem and issue right to how to actually create all of the code and fields and methods. In the next part of the tutorial, we're going to take this UML diagram that we created here and actually make the program that you saw at the very beginning of this tutorial. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.